All right, Outbosses, so as promised, I am recording live, and I have Tammy Wallace here. Hey, Tammy. So Tammy is all the way from Houston, Texas, and we're about to actually start the recording, and you get to see the whole process. Uh, and I don't know if we can actually fit ourselves in here. Probably not, but uh, let's see. Maybe if we scoot over this way. <laughs> okay, but don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay, so you can tune in. You can see me. We're going to be talking. And uh, we're going to get started in just a second. So let me, uh, let me make sure the recording is on. Okay. Like a few windows switching around. Okay, so um, do you want to say that again? Wait, wait, your phone? Oh, uh, your name and being an outboss. I'm Tammy Wallace, and I am an outboss. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to start the recording in three two, one. Hello, Out Entrepreneurs. Rhodes Perry here, and welcome to episode number 38 of The Out Entrepreneur, a weekly podcast where I get to interview today's most inspiring LGBTQ bosses crushing it in business. So on today's show, we are recording live from Las Vegas, Nevada, and it is super hot, and uh, it is for the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce's, I don't know, 15th annual conference? Yes. Yeah, and so 2017, here we are. And uh, I have Tammy Wallace here with us, all the way from Houston, Texas. So how hot does this compare to Houston, or are we uh, kind of in the ballpark range there? Pretty much in the ballpark range, except Houston has a lot of humidity. It's okay. Dry. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a yeah. sauna, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, I asked this of all of the outbosses. So, Tammy, are you ready to inspire fellow out entrepreneurs? I am ready. <laughs> Excellent. Let's do it. Excellent. So a little bit about Tammy. Tammy is the founder and principal consultant of InFocus Strategies. She is widely recognized as a strategist and thought partner, and InFocus Strategies offers high-quality, customized LGBTQ diversity and inclusion training and consulting, and the firm supports organizations that desire to differentiate themselves through an inclusive culture and work environment. I love that. As a fellow DNI practitioner, we are we are a good company, so I know that we're going to have an awesome conversation. And also, Tammy is the uh, co-founder and co-chair of the Houston LGBT Chamber of Commerce. So definitely, we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit about that as well. So to kick us off, Tammy, tell us a little bit more about InFocus Strategies and what makes it unique. Sure. Well, first of all, let me say thank you so much for the opportunity to be uh, participate on the podcast today, and it's great to meet you in person. Um, so in Focus st Strategies, what makes it unique is we're offering local solutions for companies. Houston is the third largest, now Chicago might argue about that, but we are uh, clearly almost the third largest um, city in the country. So we think there's a unique opportunity to bring um, high quality DNI work focused on the LGBTQ community. Um, engaging ERG groups to have impact with their, um, with their planning in terms of what they're doing and how they're engaging the community or coming in and bringing top quality training. Yeah, and that's, that's absolutely needed uh, for folks that are really engaged with some of the policy and the advocacy side. We know that Houston was a battleground a couple of years ago around the, the ordinance and uh, trans people were once again in the crosshairs. So, once yeah, again. Yeah, and so I definitely think that for, for the city, you know, for a lot of people that were on the right side of history, I mean, all of the work that you're doing, people are hungry for it. And I think especially, you know, we'll have a question later on about the current political climate, mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely know um, from, from work, similar work that, that I'm doing uh, in Pacific Northwest, yeah, it's just, it's a good time to be in business. So with all of that, uh, you know, kind of politics, culture, Right now at In Focus, what has you most inspired? Like, what is that next thing that really lights you up when you wake up in the morning? You know, what really lights me up, it, and I'm so energized about this work, is our opportunity to truly make a difference. We, if we can come into organizations and help educate employees, they learn a little bit more about the LGBTQ community, about their coworkers. What I love about that, though, is planting that seed, and beyond that, they take that home. Maybe they have an LGBTQ child or a sister or brother, and all of a sudden they hug that person a little bit more. They understand that person a little bit more. That's a powerful experience, and I love the fact that we can be part of um, helping to plant that seed and take it beyond the workplace. Yeah, it's very heart-centered work, and mm -hmm. when you see people have that light bulb moment, that's success right there, right? And especially when people are just so motivated to say, Tammy, you did an awesome job. 
here's what we're doing with what we learned. And sometimes people, I would imagine, surprise you, right? Yes. In terms of where they take the work. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I love what you say about heart-centered. Because um, when I launched In Focus, that's what I wanted to do was mission map. Yeah. So, well, that leads to the next question, yeah. which is great. So um, usually people that I interview, you know, they start their businesses for one of two reasons. The first is, is like you said, it's um, thinking about purpose and knowing that, you know, you have this idea, you have kind of a, a plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of us who are more <laughs> analysis paralysis have great plans, and others are just like, we're going to do it. But regardless, people start because they have that passion. Some other people um, start because... They have been working on someone else's dreams. They've been making someone else really wealthy for a long time mm-hmm. and just realize, hey, you know, I'm doing all this work and I feel like I have to compromise part of myself. I feel like I have to conform to a culture that doesn't value who I am. And so, Tammy, I'm curious, you know, which, which side of the coin resonates more with you? Well, I think it's a hybrid for me. Um, when I launched my firm in 2012, I had just gotten caught up in a layoff. That was a second in my career. So I'm doing that hmm, aha, uh-huh, like, hmm, what does this mean? What does this look like? Um, but also wanting to do work that truly, my, what I call, feed my soul. Yeah. Um, and having a realization that I could do work that was both a mission match and be abundantly compensated. Um, and also be, be the visionary. Be the one that's creating the vision and actually implementing it. So early in my career, I was very much tactical, if you will, more project management. I'm a great project manager. Um, as my cur- career as I've matured, I've seen my brain go to that more strategist side. So what I love is this now, uh, this melding of the two, so I can create vision and then really put a plan together to implement it. And that's all in my purview, and that's what I love, and that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I love that. I love you were talking about being abundantly compensated, yes. and also having that control over the vision, right? Knowing that, and you, you had mentioned you're a great project manager, sure, you know, you can work for someone else and be abundantly compensated in different ways, but that that vision piece, no matter what, no matter how big you get as the CEO, as kind of the chief visionary officer, whatever you want to call yourself, you, you always are going to be seeing that next step, that next thing, and kind of really digging in, and, right? That, that probably lends a lot of excitement and, you know, staying committed to Sometimes what can be hours and hours every day of doing the work. It, it reminds me, too, when I was uh, really contemplating whether to launch my own business, I had, um, I had a good friend I sat down with, and they said, Tammy, here's the deal. A lot of people want to launch a consulting firm, and they have a great network. They really have to cultivate their product or service. In the, other, in the reverse, they have a great product or service, but they have to cultivate a network. Through my work and my career that I've done, I, jack, I'm a, I, I joke I'm a jack of all trades, and I see that now as a valuable asset. Um, they said, you've got both. Go for it. Make it happen. Yeah. It gave me the courage to launch. Yeah, and you did that in 2012, right? 2012. 2012, okay. So as you were, you know, you were coming off of this layoff, you're thinking about what's next, you have this vision, you know you have what it takes. Um, remembering the culture of where you were at before, and especially because you're doing DNI work, you know, what's maybe one thing that you do and thinking about people that you contract with or you know, if you're at the point where you're hiring people, how do you kind of take what you've experienced in these years of working and, and being that chief visionary officer of saying, you know what, this is how we're going to be different and this is how we're going to you know, walk the walk, you know, making sure that what we're, the guidance that we're pro- providing our clients, we're doing that as well. That's a terrific question. And so I am, what I've done um, through the DNI work, I have brought together some best-in-class trainers, and we're continuing to talk to some others, I mean, top-notch people, some that have been doing this work in Houston. And what I'm trying to instill in them, and they're starting to really, really um, grasp, is we have an opportunity to do this work and get compensated, just like any other specialized training that you see in corporate America today, that we don't have to do work for free. Um, we don't have to do work and undervalue ourselves. I think I see that with the LGBTQ community as a whole. We want to change that. And so if I can instill that in these individuals and help them see themselves as entrepreneurs and understand their value and their worth, that's a win-win. Yeah, that, that kind of mentorship that you're providing is, is really key, I think, especially for younger people that, uh, that definitely have the abilities to, to be business owners and just kind of need that 
that extra push. And I think especially as a co-founder of a, a local chamber, you're definitely walking the walk, mm -hmm. right? So I'd like to switch just a little bit and talk more about your LGBT identity um, and how that kind of shows up in your work. And so if you could take us back to 2012, you know, you're, you're contemplating your next steps. Thinking about, you know, follow, being a part of the Rainbow family, did that influence, you know, where, how you took your next step? It did, and I, you know, I think back to 2012, I was um, just to get a little vulnerable here, but um, it was a really difficult decision whether I come out or not. Now I was out, clearly I've been doing work in the community for a long time, but as an, a business owner, I started out and I didn't have references on my website. I had two bios, my LGBTQ bio and my other bio. And what I found every time I would work on that LG, or the, the, the non-LGBTQ bio, I was not bringing my authentic self. There was a gap. I could feel it. I, I, I literally felt it sitting at the computer. And it just ate at me a little bit at a time. And there was a um, point a couple of years ago that that, that switch flipped. And I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. It doesn't serve me. It doesn't serve my community, and it doesn't serve what I can do in this world. Yeah, I think that's really powerful, and I think it speaks to where we're at right now in terms of work. It, it's this, it kind of goes against like Gen X or baby boomers or even traditionalists where to be professional is a completely separate identity where you have to compartmentalize the personal. And, you know, especially being a small business owner, you have the ability to kind of lead from who you are. And that's what attracts people. You know, people like, know, and trust you, right? And exactly. if you have to, you have to be vulnerable. And so I think, thank you for sharing that. Um, and I hope that for listeners of the show, it's just, it's another push to kind of recognize that being out leads to good things. Um, and it can be scary and it's not always safe. And so, which leads me to my next question, which is, um, you know, thinking back as a business owner, so from 2012 moving forward, you, I mean, even just kind of talking about your bio and, you know, kind of having this more, uh, less personalized bio and then the, the, the bio where it's like, hey, I'm out, I'm part of the Rainbow family. Um, as you were starting to try to, to build out that pipeline, that business, you know, model, were you ever afraid of being 100% out? Did you ever think, wow, like if I'm 100% authentic, am I going to actually lose business? Can you think of an example and... How did you work around that? Because that's something that I definitely know there's certain listeners that really struggle with this, this component. Yes, I, I know I've, I've lost business. Um, but a very specific example, early um, when I launched and focused strategies, I was working on a great transformative community revitalization project. There was a church involved, and um, I was very concerned about bringing my personal life into uh, the work that I was doing. So I was consulting with one of the um, lead donors for that particular project, but I was always very cautious um, about saying anything about my wife, about you know, the community, et cetera, with this church involved. Um, that ended up being successful because there were some very um, progressive partners at the table, but um, even just last year, I remember having, a, I got a call, and it was a message, and oh, I'd like to talk to you about a project we're working on. We've heard you've done some similar work, and even before I had the chance to call them back, they, uh, they left a second message, and it said, we just realized that you're just not quite the fit we're right. looking for, um, so don't worry about calling us back. Now, do I know exactly what that was? No. Do I think what they did was go out and Google me and figure out I'm very involved LGBTQ? Yes, and it was um, a faith-based institution. I just looked at that as an opportunity, as the universe saying, here's how I'm helping you figure out the clients that you need to be working with. And the truth is, I want to work with clients that align with my values and clients that I can support even in terms of where their understanding of the, the LGBTQ community is, that they're open to learning more. Yeah. So they don't have to be, you know, raising the rainbow flag, but... I really want to work with clients that understand and respect me. Right. I think that that's, that's fantastic advice. And, it, it, you know, this, this topic has come up again and again on the show where, you know, you, you have to forego some of that revenue or you're like, oh, that would have been a good contract. But that's not the right, that's not my dream client. I'm not attracting, if I accept that, 
then I will be opening the door to accepting more of that. And rather than going down that path, uh, you know, you're you're willing to say no, to walk away, and to let the universe manifest those dream clients that even if you, like you said, you're not raising the rainbow flag, you're at least, they know who you are, they've read your bio, they know what you do, and especially doing the work of LGBT, they and I now, you know, like that's, yeah. that's people are coming to you, and that's, exactly. that's a value because you have lived experience, you know, you know, like one, one aspect of kind of the, the vastness of the rainbow family, um, but speaking from experience really does give a lot of people confidence. I wanted, I wanted to hone in on something you said, attracting um, the clients that you want to work with. And I think, you know, I always encourage people that are coming to me to get advice on starting a business or if they're already running one. It's like, literally, on paper, write out who is your ideal client? What does that person or what does that company look like? And put out in the universe that this, these are the types of clients I want to work with. That also helps you when a client comes to you, especially when maybe revenue is a little short and you're, you know, oh, well, okay, maybe I could do this. It helps you stay true to what you've said is your authentic client and say no. Yeah, I think that's great. It's the avatar. So just getting as specific as you can. And I think, you know, if you if you have had some clients in the past that you really enjoyed working with, start there. Um, if you're just starting out, you know, manifest <laughs> who you want, you know, people that you really like in your life and try to attract those people. So definitely, definitely really solid advice there. So uh, we, you know, we talked about some of the challenges of being out in business. I also like to flip that and say, you know, thinking about your lived experience of being a part of the Rainbow Family, what are some of those lived experiences that you view as assets that help you be a better business owner uh, at InFocus Strategies? Some of those lived experiences. Um, well, I think, um, you know, definitely the layoffs that I experienced. I mean, they really pushed me to be an entrepreneur. What I look back now, when I reflect back now, I can see where I was actually an entrepreneur in these companies and always trying to think of things to do differently, ways to do uh, things differently inside a company. Um, I was destined to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I didn't know an LGBTQ entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me jump in. So on that, um, so, so thinking about some of the lived experiences by being a part of the Rainbow Family. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it's like experiences of coming out, like uh, some, some of the really specific things that you know, that are unique to our communities. Uh, how do you see some of those experiences translating into being a really effective business owner? I think, um, you know, being able to, uh, it, it's what I call the grit and the persistence piece. Yeah. Um, ever since I was a child and recognized that I was different, um, I, I, I quickly learn to cultivate this grit and persistence about myself growing into my teenage years and through some of those experiences. I mean, moving to Houston when I was 17. Um, and then coming out at uh, 25 and having to uh, really connect into that grit and persistence. And I actually had a boss at work um, who, she would push me, she had, she had seen the ring on my finger and really, really pushed me to come out. And we were just in a conference room so I'll, I always joke, I, I actually came out at work, but to a senior level manager, so everything else was gravy. Not quite, because then I didn't know how my coworkers were going to accept me. Um, I was very fortunate that at the time the coworkers did, but I know that I've had experiences, um, some that I directly know of and others that I understand that people, I got passed over. Um, those are, you know, those are those have been challenging times, but they make me the business owner I am today in terms of persistence as I've shifted what InFocus is doing, the mission match work we want to do um, for this next phase. I'm really, really excited that we have an opportunity to do groundbreaking work in Houston, but it's going to take grit, it's going to take persistence, it's going to take commitment, and um, all of that is part of my lived experience. I love that. I love, I, yeah. A grit and persistence, I, I don't think you, you can say that enough. You know, I think people who are not LGBT but are business owners can definitely identify that, identify with that. And for LGBT folks who aren't entrepreneurs, you know, that's that's a lot of our lives, our, a lot of our lived experiences, at least, you know, at least with, with coming out. Uh, even if you come out with to the most accepting family or friends, there's still <laughs> grit and persistence of being okay in your own skin and getting to that point of being out with others. So I, I really thank you for sharing that. Before we go to a sponsorship break, 
I wanted to to ask you to think about uh, you know some of the the challenges of being out as a business owner and some of the, those things that really make us effective because of our experiences. What do you want our listeners to hone in on so that they can remember this interview, remember all of your sage advice about just being uh, being authentic in their work right now? You know, if they have a side hustle, if they're still an employee somewhere, um, or if they just started their own businesses, what should they remember from you around just, Tammy said this, and I want to be more authentic in what I do? Here's what I would say is, what I've realized, Rose, in the last couple of years is that I am owning this LGBTQ entrepreneur part of myself. I have not framed myself. I have framed myself as a business owner and a, and a lot of other um, labels, I guess, identity. I have really begun to embrace this LGBTQ, LGBTQ entrepreneur side of myself. I'm excited about that. And part of, we'll talk more about the chamber, but that's helped me realize um, power that we have as an LGBTQ entrepreneur community, um, how we can help one another. You have been tremendously helpful in mentoring me and giving me advice. Um, that's what I'm so excited about. Folks that are contemplating this, step into this amazing world that to me is just on the ground level. And where this community is going to go as we continue to support each other and work this stuff out, bring unique talent and opportunities, that's powerful. I love that. Thank you. So we are going to take a very quick sponsorship break. I want to keep talking, and I know that we're going to keep talking at this conference. So, uh, But for our listeners, uh, sorry, you're, gonna, you're only going to get a few more minutes. So stick around, and when we come back, we're going to learn a little bit more about Tammy and all that her business is doing to make the world just a little bit better. So thanks. Okay, so this is a this is for the editor. This is our break. Um, so I just, I, I don't even know if there's one person viewing. All right, hello. Um, and I want to make sure that you see Tammy. I'm not talking to myself. So we've got a little FaceTime. Maybe we'll, we'll kind of turn the camera this way if you feel comfortable. But I'm like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's see. Will this work? Now the phone's going to go offline. <laughs> okay. So there is Tammy. Uh, okay. So this is one of the kinks in the system that I'll work out at some point. But <laughs> Always something to work out. I know, right? This is this is what we do. <laughs> this is how we do Figure it. Okay. It out. All right. So yeah, there you go. That's perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So they don't have to look at me anymore. Um, okay. So the and this is the viewers get to hear some of the the behind the scenes. So um, we're going to go into the quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. So they're meant to be really short. Okay. And I think it's a little unfair because some of the questions you're going to want to go let, yeah. let the spirit move you for for hours and hours. Right. Um, but yeah, to, so I would say like a word, a phrase, or a sentence or two. Um, and there's a new question that I'm kind of experimenting with, okay. and so I'm interested in what people have to say about it. But the, the question is basically um, thinking about the current administration as compared to the previous administration, uh, presidential administration. Um, how do you view number 45 as being either good for LGBT businesses or uh, a threat or a harm? And so I think like kind of tying in some of the chamber work there would be really mm -hmm. nice. if yeah if that fits with your response. But um, so just kind of I'll, I'll put that more towards the end. And uh, so if you are feeling good, let me just make sure we're still recording. Okay, okay. good. So far, so yeah. good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good? yeah. We've okay. got yeah. This, the sound. I think the sound is much better this way than, than uh, the way that I do it at home. So. Who knows? Maybe I'll like go on like a out entrepreneur tour or something with local chambers, but uh, for the future, yeah, I love that. Yeah, that would be really fun. Start with Jason. Yeah, yeah. I was talking with Jason about that. So anyway, so we're gonna cool. okay. All right, so we're gonna go back. Uh, let's see, where are we? Okay, bonus round. All right, so we're gonna go back in three, two, one. Welcome back, out bosses. We are now going into our bonus round, where we'll get the chance to get to know Tammy just a little bit better, gain some insights on how we can bring our whole selves to work and then learn one way to stay in touch with Tammy after today's conversation. So, Tammy, are you ready for the quick-fire questions? I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, so in one sentence, what does it mean to bring your whole self to work? It means to bring every part of myself, including my LGBTQ identity, with no hesitation, no exceptions, no holes apart. I love that. And it starts with your bio. So <laughs> be out and proud. That's right. Yeah, I love that. And what's one personal habit that helps you master yourself and your business? Focus. I am very, very focused. My wife jokes. Like she can come home and wonder, you know, like, what are you doing? Because um, I don't stop, but focus is key. Yeah, I love that. There's the, the phrase, finish one course until successful. 
and focus strategies, that that's your thing, right? That's right. That's, I love that's that. Right. I love that. Okay, so what's, uh, let's see, uh, name one thing that you readily, readily delegate in your business to stay focused on what you're good at. That's a challenge that I have as um, a small shop, and that's actually what I'm working on, but I'm proud that I've hired an accountant and a bookkeeper, so I don't worry about doing those things. I love that. I bet the accounting, bookkeeping, social media, those are all things that always come up on this. And I think like as solopreneurs, small business owners, smaller businesses with like less than 10 people, uh, it can be, especially when you are, when you are so skilled and yeah. you, you described yourself as a jack of all trades. So you can do, you know that you can do all of that stuff. You can probably do it at a, a different quality than maybe it, even if you contracted it out. And at the same time, that's not the vision, that's not you kind of driving the ship. So, um, and I think kind of, you know, I listen to some entrepreneurial podcasts and one of the consistent themes, depending on the show, is that it's really, when you start out as a solopreneur, knowing the systems, right? Knowing like these details yeah. that, yeah, it takes up a lot of time right now, but knowing that at one point you are going to delegate it when you have a team, if that's the direction that you're going in. So you can look at it this way, especially for people who are listening who are solopreneurs. Know those systems and think about when you when you do hire your big team, right? Yeah. How you explain to those folks like how to do it. Or if you're the Zappos model and you hire really talented people, figure out those talented people, what their skills are, and kind of plug them in, into those those kind of processes that you've mapped out, right? Exactly. And, um, it, you know, I always ask myself, is this the best use of my time? Can I be out business, uh, focused on business development, cultivating new clients? Or sitting at my desk putting in receipts into QuickBook or reconciling my bank accounts? Yep. That's an easy question. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, this, is this the best use of our time? And just kind of remember that. Great advice. Okay, so uh, this is this is a newer question, and uh, I've, been, I've asked a, a previous guest on the show this question. So um, given the current political cultural environment that we're in uh, and the current presidential administration compared to the previous how do you view number 45 as being uh, either a threat to LGBTQ businesses or something that is galvanizing the LGBT business community? I think it's a hybrid uh, threat. Um, I'm concerned about opportunities putting on my chamber hat uh, that I think um, a different administration would have brought to the table for the LGBTQ entrepreneur community, particularly for LGBTQ certified businesses. Um, galvanizing. I'm, I'm seeing people that are getting involved that have never been involved that are stepping up. I liken it actually to when the marriage equality fight broke out in 2004, which is what really got me involved in LGBTQ advocacy. Um, people stepped up and stepped in even when they were completely fearful. That created conversations that they'd never had before with family members and friends. This is galvanizing us in a different way, and I think we'll look back and say, well, it's rough right now. Um, it's going to push us probably 20 years faster, although it doesn't feel like it right now. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And it's uh, I definitely, you know, in the work that we're doing, people, the conversations are happening, whether they're happening skillfully or not, around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think uh, in particular with LGBT communities, people are hungry to learn more. You know, as someone who's trans, just kind of, seen last week, you know, this this is being recorded on August 1st, so I'm just calling July anti-LGBT month. <laughs> it was a rough month yes. for a lot of us, Very. and, um, you know, just kind of the response of people in the military to this kind of supposed transgender ban, and then also business communities and allies all around the country, people really showing up for trans people in a right. way that I've never seen before. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's... That, <laughs> that's powerful, and, you know, I talked to my 12 and a half year old niece literally two days ago, and she said, what is the president doing with the trans ban? Yeah. She was here, it was, she was in Houston for Pride Month, met a lot of transgender folks for the first time, yeah. so that connection for that 12 and a half year old, it's huge. That wouldn't be happening. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so there's there's the silver lining there. Um, so two more questions for you. Uh, the So thinking about those folks who listen into the show, they're, they're either thinking about leaving their current jobs, they have a side hustle, you know, what's the advice that you would give to those folks to take that first entrepreneurial leap? I'm going to tell you what was my guiding principle when I first started in Focus Strategies, and that was, and still is, that you have to step outside of your comfort zone. The comfort zone is safe, it's the known, 
Um, it's easy, quite frankly. Getting outside of the com outside of your comfort zone is risky. It's scary. There's tons of fear, but it's the place for the most amazing growth, opportunity to learn, to make a difference, yeah. and to truly live. That is where the magic happens. That right? is where the this, magic and happens. It, and it hurts sometimes, right? Like, oh, this is so hard. But definitely uh, lean into that fear, or you know, whatever kind of like catchy phrase you have for that. But just just move forward and and uh, uh, trust your trust your intuition. And I you know I wanted to say on that too. I think for LGB, LGBTQ entrepreneurs, it's even more of a challenge, right, yeah. to move outside of that comfort zone. Totally. So when we do, that's very empowering. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing. So so Tammy, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure. Before we go. Uh, I know that a lot of folks are really excited about what you're doing. So where can we find you, and what's the best way to get in touch with you? Absolutely. My website, uh, www.infocusstrategies.com. That's infocus with an E. Uh, info at infocusstrategies.com. Please email me. I would love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, and we will include that in the show notes. So infocusstrategies, info at infocus. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. And on social Within media as well. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All right. So, so again, Tammy, thank you for being on the show. And for Outbosses, thank you again for tuning into this week's episode. It is always my privilege to connect with you and so many inspiring Outbosses like Tammy. So as a next step, check out the show notes from highlights from today's conversation, subscribe to the podcast, and consider leaving a rating and review in iTunes. And for now, keep being your authentic selves 100% of the time. Yeah, it's a wrap. All right. I know. All right, so we need to stop this, and we'll... So, all right, bye, YouTube. Thank you. Uh, Tammy's going to say bye, bye. and uh, we'll see you at the next recording. Hopefully this...